All right. Uh, good evening, Grace Point. Well, when you listen to this, should be early November, and uh, we just had the election yesterday. I'm posting this on a Thursday night, which will be tomorrow, but we just had the election yesterday, and I want to talk about that a little bit, and then we'll pick up back in 1 Corinthians. But first, I want to pray. Father, I thank you for the Word of God. I thank you for the truth of the Word. And I ask you to help me uh, in all the lessons I'm giving, that I would preach with the spirit of wisdom and revelation, that I would say what you want me to say, no more and no less. I pray for um, our ears to open, our eyes to open. Give us understanding of your heart and the word of God in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so this is kind of a special insert here post-election. Uh, yesterday in the state of Ohio, there was a law passed that approved, really, there was a lot of language in it, but the bottom line is it's uh, abortion on demand. All you need is a Planned Parenthood doctor to say you need it. And uh, I was really grieved. I'd really been speaking out on that issue. I had preached in the church on the topic of abortion. And it really grieves me the direction that our state is going and the direction people are going. I have a hard time believing that people cannot see the sanctity of human life, that man is created in the image of God. And, uh, you know, a baby that's, you know, 20 weeks old is, is really just about fully formed. Uh, and the heartbeat starts, I think, like six or seven weeks in a baby and yet these laws have been more and more aggressive. And it just, I can't even imagine where this is going. Do you know in the Roman culture, a fanticide was legal. Do you know what a fanticide is? It's coming to America. A fanticide is when you can kill a baby after it's born. And there are already people talking about that. There are ethicists, uh, ethicists that say that. Uh, until a child has memories and socialization, they're not even human then, <laughs> okay? Because, because when you take away an absolute standard, which for us as Christians is God and then God's word, when you take away an absolute standard and you replace it with human opinion, human philosophy, um, humanism. You, you start with man as the center of what's true and you work out. There are no absolutes. Think about it. What absolutes does a man without a true objective moral law or a God, a judge, which God is a judge, or a judge behind that moral law, what objective moral standard do you have? Now think about that. People say, oh, well, we know right from wrong. But how do you know right from wrong? What if person A says you can murder somebody at five years old? They're not really a formed human being yet. Person B says, no, it's two years old. Person C says it's at birth. And person D says, no, it's six months pregnant. Who's right? One person says, well, prostitution should be legalized because, uh, it, you know, women can make money and we need to legalize it and protect it. We can tax it and uh, men need to have sex. Another person says, no, it shouldn't be. You're abusing women. And so you have this debate back and forth. But when you start with man at the center, OK, that man is the measure of all things and man is the measure of what's moral, it's all subjective. It's all a matter of human opinion. And I'll tell you what happens. Every single time when man starts from himself and as the bearer or as the standard of truth, what happens ultimately is the people that have power are the ones that make the rules. Foucault talked about this. Other, you know, Nietzsche talked about this. It's the person that has the power that makes the rules. So if uh, your political party is in power, if your political persuasion is in power, you get to make the rules. Truth is relative. 
There's no absolute standard. So what's happened in our state, the state of Ohio, and in our country, is that even though there are many people that profess to know God, or they profess to be Christians, they've left the standard, or they've left the truth of God, and they've uh, proceeded after a lie. They, they've forsaken God and chased after a lie. Paul said in the book of 2 Thessalonians that there would be a great deception in the last days before the man of sin, the man of apostasy, is revealed. There'd be a great deception. And that's what's happened in our culture. There's a great deception. Many, many Christians have given up on the word of God as our plumb line. Do you know what I mean by plumb line? Plumb line is, is, is a standard. It's, it's the standard of what makes something level or even. And uh, the word of God is our plumb line. So when we leave God and we turn away from God, it becomes uh, just a matter, right and wrong become a matter of opinion. And then what always happens, chaos is the result. Can you see that? Sam, can you see that? That when you lose an absolute standard, the only thing that's left is chaos. What else could be left? It's like in a family. If there's no mom and dad and the kids are left to themselves and there's no discipline, there's no loving discipline, what's going to result? Chaos. Paul said in the book of Romans chapter 1, he said that even though, this is in verse uh, 28, it says, even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, malicious, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are gossips, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, uh, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who know the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death. Not only do they do the same things, but they approve of those that do them. So it says, because they don't retain God in their knowledge, chaos ensues, all manner of wickedness. Now, historically, what happens? Where are we at on time, Brian? We're at 17? Seven minutes, okay. Historically, what happens is after the chaos, there's often an authoritative figure that comes into power to quell the chaos. So you'll have, you'll have power, someone with power come in. And I've given examples in church, like Stalin comes into Russia during chaos, a totalitarian. Hitler comes into Germany after chaos. Uh, you know, and Napoleon, after the French Revolution, comes into power. In America, we were built on the foundation of God. So we had a republic come into power. We had the Constitution come into power. We were different uh, in, in America. Our revolution was really based on the word of God. So it was a total different result than what happened in the French Revolution, which the French Revolution was a result of humanism. It resulted in chaos and mayhem. And then a dictator, Napoleon, came in afterwards. And that's almost always what happens. Now, here's the problem in the last days. During all the chaos of our sin, abortion, transhumanism, transgenderism, you know, all the things that, you know, covetousness, selfishness, untrustworthiness, when sin increases, chaos increases, and this is going to be the opportunity for the man of sin, the man of lawlessness to come in, and he opposes everything that's good and everything that's God, and he is going to set himself up as God and, uh, call, and, and everybody's going to call for peace, peace, peace and safety. The problem is this man of sin... This man of sin is all to, just like Hitler. He's going to call for peace. He's going to proclaim peace, but he's going to set the world at war. And Christians will be the main target. Those that stay faithful and true to Jesus Christ will be outlawed, will be targeted, and will be persecuted. Now, we can short 
circuit this. We can still, I believe, delay this in America by repentance, prayer, revival, and reformation. And I encourage everyone for the state of Ohio, the United States, all these things that are going on. It's not one thing. It's a multitude of things that are going on. And I could just list the deceptions that are out there. I'm, I'm just going to stick with abortion, you know, just transhumanism, transgenderism. There's a lot of deceptions out there. We absolutely have to pray. We have to be vocal. We have to be active in preaching the gospel and holding out the word of life to people, praying for revival, repentance, revival, and reformation. Because if that does not happen, we are going to create a vacuum where an antichrist spirit comes into our country and comes into this world, and we are going to be in trouble. And the church is the only thing that holds that antichrist spirit back. So, given the result, I, I cannot believe that this bill passed, this issue passed in Ohio. But given that it did, we have to see and understand the times we're living, living in. We could be on the brink of a great reformation, great revival, or we could be on times of great chaos. Who is going to decide that? I'm asking you, who's going to decide that? I believe it's the church, the church of the living God. We have to be vocal in preaching the gospel, caring for the homeless, uh, helping the poor, helping single mothers, supporting uh, orphans and, and widows, and doing uh, the acts and charity and kindness of Jesus, uh, supporting heartbeats, prison ministries, feeding kids in Haiti, all these things that the church has always done, and speaking up for truth. Speaking the truth in love, no matter how we're demonized or cast out, speaking the truth in love. So I'm going to end this here, and we're going to get back into Corinthians. Before I do, I want to read a scripture in Jeremiah that came to me this last few days. Then we'll just we'll, we'll stop this conversation, and maybe we'll pick it up another time. But um, Jeremiah says in Jeremiah 19, prophesying for God. Because they have forsaken me and made this an alien place, because they have burned incense in it to other gods whom neither they, their fathers, nor the kings of Judah have known, and have filled this place with the blood of the innocents. They have also built up high places to Baal, to burn their sons and daughters with fire, for burnt offerings to Baal, which I did not command you, nor did I decree it, nor did it even come into my mind. Let's be clear about something. God did not decree abortion. The sacrifices to Baal, our children walking through fire, the death of innocent blood. God did not decree it. He did not command it. And it didn't even come into his mind. It's not the thought of God. It's the thought of wicked men in allegiance with the Antichrist spirit. Let's be clear about this. There is no ambiguity here. Jeremiah chapter 1 says, Before you were born, I knew you. Before you were even conceived in your mother's womb, I knew you, let alone six weeks old, 12 weeks old, 21 weeks old, or nine months old. Let's be clear about that. This is an antichrist, anti-God law. It's passed in Ohio. We need to repent. We need to pray for revival and reformation. I'll just, I'll leave it right there.